you ever feel like your photography is just like kind of all over the place? Well, the legendary Robert Frank, well, he mastered the art of shooting with intent in his seminal book, The Americans. And today I'd like to show you how you can apply some of his techniques in your next photo shoot. As it has it, why does intent matter so much when we're taking photographs? Well, as soon as you get out on the street, like me, and you're wandering around without any intent, it makes the photographs feel disconnected. However, when you have a clear purpose about what you're actually focusing on in your shoots, then it makes it so much easier. Robert Frank's book, The Americans, seminal work in the history of photography, is a perfect example of this. That project isn't just about picking up a camera, heading west and photographing whatever comes our way, right? <laughs> I think there's a song in there somewhere. It's about showing the country's raw and polished reality. So that book didn't just come about by accident. Every single shot that Robert Frank took had an intention. And that intention was to create an image that would contribute to a larger message about society as a whole, as Robert Frank saw it. And, and there's a lesson in here that comes from Robert that he wasn't so much concerned about the technical correctness of the images. It's more about the emotion, right? He's not no longer walking the streets with a four by five camera, this large thing. Instead, you know, he spent some time with Walker Evans, who's given him a Leica, and he said, just go with that, man, and, and see what you find. And that allowed him to tap into emotion, trumping the idea of technical perfection. And this has been happening recently in my own work. So I've gone through phases of, you know, worrying about technical aspects and what have you. Another day, somebody in our TB community mentioned about an app that they'd been using on a photo walk in uh, New York. And I thought, oh, this is really cool because it allows you to create pseudo long exposure images on a phone. And I've been playing with this for a while. And what I've been finding out is that it's kind of difficult to use. So I went to London last week and I decided to spend the first part of the day with the intent of actually trying to make this app work. And you can see here in this photograph, which is which is a blatant copy of Alexei Titorenko, that I'm starting to find ideas of how it works. A solid element within the frame is kind of helping these ghostly figures. All of this is actually starting to allow me to express, I think, in a more stronger way, how I actually feel about taking pictures in the city, which is that idea of being alone, of you know the, the, the loneliness in a crowd, about how things are ghost-like, they're, they're echoes of all the times and the places that have come before. And that's what I love about this app, that it isn't a proper slow shutter speed, it is, literally loads of images stacked up one on top of another because it's like it's a snapshot of an entire day that comes through. Look at this train in a real slow shutter speed. All of this would just be a blur of color, but instead you can see where the frames have been taken. Look at that. I love that idea. It just, it makes it for me feel that much more emotionally interesting. I could not say anything more than that. It just, it taps into the idea that I've always been feeling inside myself when I take these pictures. I, I love it. Somebody said this was a bit Turner-esque, which is which is lovely praise. I like that. But it's that ghost-like thing. If I'd been worried about technical aspects, I wouldn't have bothered with any of this. Now, the other thing to think about with Robert Frank's ideas is that he's going off there and he's, you know, he's wandering around and he, he likes to not tell story. I think that's kind of maybe a wrong way of putting it, but he wants to communicate visually. And as he's out there, he's focusing on telling a story, something that he did 
prior to the Americans in a book called Mary's Book, which is a one-off handmade book that he made that I'm going to go and see in May next year. More about that at the end of the video if you want to come join me in Boston. But in there, he's trying to tell stories. So when he goes out looking for photographs, he's thinking about what it is that those photographs do. You know, those photographs have to have a reason to exist. And that reason for Frank was to tell his story of how he saw America in his own voice. Now, in my own case, I have been photographing in black and white for, for a long time now, right? It's just, it's one of the things I, I, I do. I got into the habit of it. And recently I've been forcing myself to photograph in color. And the second part of that day down in London, I said, well, I'm going to focus on color specifically. Again, intent. I'm looking for in color. I'm looking for what it is that I want to shoot. I have a bit of an idea in my head and I'm walking around. And what happens? All of a sudden, photographs like this banana here are starting to appear. This photograph of a banana does not exist if I'm in a black and white frame of mind. The photograph here of the, the bust and the, the advertising siding. Okay, it's not the world's greatest picture, but I'm starting to think in different terms about what it is that I'm photographing. I'm seeing the face, I'm seeing the colors, whereas in black and white, I would be just looking at all this space here and thinking this is too dark, it's gonna be a little bit mucky and not very, not very strong graphically. And I love this. All of a sudden, because I've got this intent, because I'm going out there and I'm looking for color, it has opened up a whole world for me that prior, if I was in black and white mode, just wandering around, would be closed off. Now, how cool would that be if you want to broaden your photographic horizons, even doing something that you've been doing for ages up until now? Next time you're out there, go with a shot list. And a shot list is something that I discovered in a video class by today's sponsors, Skillshare. Now, I've been talking a lot about intent and obviously filmmakers they always seem to film with intent. It's very rare that you hear of a filmmaker wandering around just making up stuff on the fly. And I was watching a class by cinematographer Zach Mulligan on Skillshare. And now, of course, his class is designed for filmmakers, but as is with a lot of these filmmaker classes, so many of these lessons can actually be applied directly to photography. And he talks about making shot lists, about planning out your shoot. And you can do the same. You can take the ideas that you could find in the Skillshare class, along with any of the other ideas, and there are thousands of classes for creatives. You know, we've got things like photography, film design, and more. I'm pretty sure within some of those, you will find ideas in the most random of places that you can apply to your photography. But also, speaking of, of applying things, what I particularly like about Skillshare is it's learning by doing approach. All the classes on Skillshare, you are encouraged to actually work through projects on your own as you go through the lessons. So that means you can apply, obviously, what you're learning immediately and feel really kind of good about it. So the first 500 people who use the link in the description box below will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. And it is a great chance to dive in, you know, develop some new skills. The winter's coming, you know, the days are getting shorter. And not only just experiment with your photography, but learn from a whole range of industry professionals. You know, the big trap that a lot of people fall into when they think about street photography, or just photography in general, is that it just it's just chance, it's just luck. Sure, the more you go out there and photograph, the luckier you're gonna get. But at the beginning, if you are just learning, if you are just trying out something new, like I'm trying out color photography, I can't just let it happen naturally. I have to make a concerted effort to get myself in that zone, as it were. So the next time that you're out and about and you're thinking about something that has inspired you or you wanna try something out, make a shot list. Think about, is it something you wanna approach from a technical point of view that you wanna get away from so that you can express yourself with a bit more of an emotion like, like Robert Frank does with you know, his, his approach with like a, a smaller format instead of a large format, it's more static approach. 
Or do you want to just, you know, have something to say? Do you have a message that would need for you to have some clarity as you're getting out there, as you're photographing, as opposed to just being haphazard about it? Now, talking about, you know, having some clarity and, and being focused and inspired, I did mention earlier about Mary's book. So this is a handmade, one-off book that Robert Frank made for his girlfriend slash fiance slash future wife when he was in Europe. And this is before the Americans. And that book is all about a, a visual narrative. It's about how he misses her and he wants to be with her. So those photographs are communicating things. And there's two great things about this, right? One is that sounds really cool and I'd love to see it. And we're going to go and see it because next May in Boston, it is the inaugural photographic eye photo walk three day weekend extravaganza. Woohoo! <laughs> so part of the highlights of that weekend, we're going to go and see the Robert Frank Mary's book. We're going to get a chance to wander around with intent, with purpose, because it's all about helping you to see the world and, you know, as a photographer does, which is a phrase I keep using, but, you know, what does it actually mean? But it's a chance to overcome some of these, these biases that hold us back and you know, opposite, get a chance to photograph bananas in the street, which you may have missed before. If you want to find out more about that when it opens up, which is going to be in a couple of weeks, if you want to get on the wait list, because uh, there's only going to be 15 people, click on the link underneath all the Skillshare gump, um, you know, down below. Um, gives you an email, I will let you know when it's open. In the meantime, if you want to find out how to take pictures like Henry Cartier Brisson, another street photography genius legend, then check out this video over here. Thank you ever so much for watching. It's been an absolute pleasure. I love seeing you and uh, cheerio.